Welcome back, folks. Greg Silverman here. Uh, another session of Come Learn With Me. You know, investing is the most difficult undertaking I think I've ever uh, done as a life, a life goal. And um, whilst investing can, we can be featured using fundamental analysis, technical analysis, I'm a big proponent of psychological analysis when it comes to the markets. You know, buy, buy with blood in the street, which means everyone's scared to death and sell when there's uh, absolute greed and you know certainly there was absolute greed in the uh, mega tech mega tech sector um, quite recently right three four months ago maybe so we're always looking at psychological articles to give us the edge this one percolated to the top so let's read it together one way to create good habits that actually stick why you should use situational cues when planning for the future research suggests about performing a certain behavior in a certain situation and mentally linking the two can create new habits. Strategically linking an intention to a situation can help people remember that intention. People high on the personality dimension of consciousness are particularly good at executing this type of if-then thinking. A new study published in PLOS One explains how one can make long-term behavioral changes by using if-then action planning instead of relying purely on motivation or willpower. Habits result from repeated past experiences of executing a specific behavior in a particular situation, says psychologist Torsten Martini Junger from UIT, the Arctic University of Norway. An open question, however, is how novel behaviors become habits. We do not have the prior experiences that make them habit habitual, so how are they formed? The researchers hypothesize that people create new habits by thinking about performing a certain behavior in a certain situation. In other words, by creating stimulus response links in the thought. According to Martin Hunger, people usually take one of three approaches when executing an action intended for the future. Here's an example. Suppose you agree to do a friend a favor, for example, sending a web address that you have as a bookmark on your home computer. You can't access that bookmark right now, right away. How are you able to complete the task some hours later? Here are three possibilities. The first approach is to verbally repeat it to yourself continuously i.e. keep it active in working memory. However, given the many demands of our daily life, it is unlikely that we can remain focused in such a way for a prolonged amount of time. Researchers in prospective memory provide another possible mechanism. They suggest that, su that such an... ...process that we are only minimally aware of or not. The third alternative depends on the brain's ability to form associative links. The intention to send the web address may be linked to a situational cue. For example, by reading emails on your home computer, the friend may be referred to in one of the emails, situational cue. This cue then triggers the recollection of having to send the bookmark. The authors found evidence to suggest that the third possibility is the primary method through which memories are prompted and new habits are formed. Furthermore, they suggest this method can be used strategically by people to improve memory and habit formation. For example, when receiving the web address request, one can think repeatedly, the next time I start my home computer, I'll first send my friend the web address instead of relying on some coincidence to remind one about the intention. One can strategically link the intention to a situation. Research indicates that making such if-then plans, which are nothing more than verbal situation response links, facilitate remembering, explains Martini Hunger. The research has also found that people high on the personality dimension of consciousness were particularly good at executing this if-then. This is not terribly surprising, according to, according to Martini Hunger, as consciousness is characterized by habitual planning behaviors like making lists and using a calendar. Our interpretation of this result is that thinking in a situation response format is one of the cognitive procedures that consciousness, that conscientious people are habitually doing, says Martin Hugo. This, this intuitive use of a beneficial strategy contributes to being more successful in day-to-day self-regulation. From a practical perspective, when dealing with behaviors we cannot execute right away, the authors advise people to rely less on motivation and willpower and more on associative cues. The practical advice is to link the intended behavior to situational cues that provide good opportunities to initiate them, says Martin Hunger. To get a little more physically active, for instance, and repeatedly think to yourself, when I'm waiting in front of the elevator, I'll turn around and use the stairs. 
Such if then planning is not magic and it will not lead to successful implementing, successfully implementing the intended behavior every time, but it will increase the likelihood of completing it. Well, there you go. Psychological keys, cues. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, learned something. Take a look at some of our links down below. Uh, we've got a very extensive investment program and investment research and LinkedIn groups. And please uh, subscribe and like and uh, join us again for another interesting session of Come Learn With Me. Greg Silverman, out for now.